Bastard! Where'd you get your treat? Jesus Christ! One gamba to alley. This is the Dave Duke podcast. O Mokara, Konasa Tautu, it's Misha Dahi Duke, and this is episode 17 of the Dave Duke podcast. What a week we've had since we spoke last. I've been in Balana. Wow, magic. I've been in Athlon. It's where I live. I've been in Schleigo. I've been in Litrum, and I've passed through other places, which I might or might not get to. Stay tuned for more. This week's podcast is going to be about the internal battle in my head about what to do next. Perhaps we spoke about this before, but I wouldn't go as far as saying I'm mentally unstable, but I'm certainly mentally active. Do not worry for my mental health. Some people asked me, was I in a better position after recording the Weddings podcast than when I was recording it? Yes. But... I think there is an expectation that I'm happy-go-lucky all the time, but that couldn't be further from the truth. I wouldn't say I'm a depressive. I wouldn't say I'm depressed. I know when I have been. I can feel it coming on when it's happening. But currently, my mood is steady. It's not irrational. It is not erratic. But I want you to know my thoughts currently about DJing and work and the balance that is trying to be struck, but can never be perfected. Since we spoke last, we had Balanaz beat on the street. What a day last Thursday was. It was full on. A rise at 7 o'clock, which would be very early for me of a weekday. There was a lot of preparation to be done. Doing an outside broadcast of a day is a lot more work than doing a show from the normal iRadio studios. Because you have to have all your ducks in a row. You have to have your clips ready. You have to have your features ready. You have to have the logs back at base ready. You have to inform who's running the desk back at base, what's about to happen. You also have to make sure that your equipment is working. A lot of things, a lot of factors. Seven o'clock arise, start the preparations. Haircut at 10, very important if you're going to Balanay, you must get a good haircut for yourself. You must look trimmed, you must look sharp. You cannot let the people of Balanay, of all places, town. This is Garen Noon's town. Follow me, I'm delicious's town. I can't walk in and compete with that man if I'm not looking sharp and ready. So haircut 10, 11 o'clock hit the road with my co-pilot for the day. Jamie. Jamie is our videographer. Jamie is our graphic designer. Well, there's Derek as well. He's there too. He's one of them. Derek, if you're listening, I wasn't trying to be exclusionary. I was just saying he was the person who was going to be there on the day. And you were too, but you were in charge of branding. Land down there for Balna at one o'clock. Time for a bit of lunch. Enter an establishment. It was shite. Got awfully rubbery chicken. Very, very fucking disappointing. Disgusting, I would go as far as to say, but was starving, so had to eat most of it and didn't make any complaint. Headed into Supermax, that's where we were doing the show from, headed upstairs to set up the outside broadcast, and I do like a bit of chill time before doing a show like that, because it's going to be hectic, and if you don't get yourself in the right space of mind, you're going to get awful brain fog. You're going to be overstimulated and you're not going to be able to think straight. So I like a few minutes beforehand and that's what I've done and then it begun from 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. It did not stop. So many children. So many. I did not know I was such a big hit in Balana with the children. There was children coming to get Free sunglasses and pop sockets and brand new air fresheners that we have. If you see any iRadio person on the street, shout at them. Give us a fucking key ring, will ya? I want a pair of fucking sunglasses. Fucking Dave Joe told me you had them. Yeah, we do now. So don't be afraid to shout. Don't be abusive towards our staff. But be firm that you want the free stuff and you'll get the free stuff. 
kids and mammies and daddies and people from all over the county and country that were there in Balanan holidays. I didn't realise there was so many people with relations in Balanan. I talked to three separate families and they were like, oh yeah, our grandparents are down here. Oh yeah, we moved to Monaghan and Cavan from here. It was great to meet absolutely everyone, but it's very overwhelming getting photos with kids. It's an odd phenomenon. Anyone asking for a selfie or a photo, but then when you are supposedly a role model to children, there's a lot of pressure on one man's shoulders, especially when he's doing a podcast like this and he tells you his deepest, darkest inner thoughts and ongoings and what happens between drinking and smoking and fighting and rowing and messing and bollocksing and up and down with the head. You can't put that on the children. And I don't. They love the bop bop baby bus. They hear some of the crack and the features. So that was three to six. It was full frontal. There was a lad in. He had a load of betting slips from Paddy Power. And he had drawn cartoon characters on them. Delightful to meet him. And then met his brother. Didn't get to see his dad who was there. And he done one of David Fanula. And I signed that for him. Got a bit of grub. And then it was straight into beat on the street. On Balanaz Pier Street. So there's a salmon festival there every year. Every town and village should have their own festival, you know, whether it's Kilchima or Balnamore or Downings or Athlone or, say, for instance, the Flam Mullingar. That's a lot bigger version of a festival and I know it travels around every year. But every town and village should have their own thing, at least during the summer. And this is Balanaz that Biden a few months ago. Unexpected, delightful, loads of American flags there. But this happens every year in Balna. And it's their thing. And this year on the Thursday, they were bringing back something that used to happen years ago called Beat on the Street. Thank you for the text. Once again, unprofessional from me. And I'm turning off notifications. It was three DJs, our Competition winner, we ran a competition on iRadio to find a young DJ up and coming and that turned out to be Stephen McArdle. Congratulations Stephen, he kicked off at 7, he done until quarter to 8 and then Connor Woods, iRadio presenter, he drove from Tipperary from one of his best friend's wedding to come up and do the gig, done his hour set, got back into the car and went back down to the wedding. Full time mad bastard, well done Connor Woods. And he had them eaten out of the palm of his hand, set them up beautifully for me. He set them up. I knocked them down. Great success in Balina. And I felt like a rock star. I was actually having more heart palpitations than I was at sea sessions. Probably because I wasn't drinking. Alcohol really does help. Unfortunately... Hey, drink responsibly, visit drinkaware.ie, but it's fucking mighty stuff when you have the old panic attacks and the old heart palpitations before going on the street of Bellinay to a thousand people and kids looking up at you like, oh my God, it's Dave Chuck. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm just a lad from Leitrim. Why, why are you so infatuated with me? I'm nothing. I'm nothing special. Stop. So as soon as the gig finished, I I played one more tune. I actually finished on, you'll either cringe or laugh or you'll enjoy this. Sweet Caroline, bump, bump, bump. I thought it was a nice unifying tune. Kids know it, teenagers know it, adults know it, everyone enjoyed it. Straight into selfies and autographs. Mad. It's a mad thing to be signing autographs. Signed hats, I signed arms, I signed hands, and the autographs started at what I think was a three-year-old child, and the mother gave me permission to sign this girl's hand. Very unusual. Very unusual. But delightful to meet so many brilliant iRadio listeners, so many brilliant podcast listeners. And the meets and greets finished not until about 20 to 11. Went into Supermax again, got a coffee. Whatever girl was behind the counter, she nearly made me cry because she said, that's on the house. 
And that really got me. Such a simple act of kindness, a free cup of coffee. They were like, oh, we really enjoyed your tunes tonight because the Supermax was right beside the stage and they were flat out working in there. And I thought, that was so fucking sound of you. Thank you. And turned around and got chat more people in Supermax. It just did not stop in Ballina. Humbled, so honoured that so many people would think so much of me to say, hello, how are you doing? Are you well? I'm not so bad. Thank you for listening. Are you riding the Bob Bob Baby bus tomorrow? You sure fucking are. Your name is on the bus. I'm after putting it down on the sheet. It, it's mad still the power that radio has. It should never be forgotten. Grand TikTok, grand Instagram, grand social media. But radio lads, if you can make a connection through radio and this audio medium, then there's nothing fucking stronger or nothing more sacred. I wasn't done. I had booked in for Bar Square, Times Square, the nightclub slash disco bar slash late night spot in Ballina for Afterbeat on the street. So went straight from Supermax with my coffee in hand and headed for Bar Square. Got settled in, done a sound check, got the equipment going. Bob's your uncle, Mary's your step aunt. And then the iRadio crew that were there on the night. Um, Michal, Valerie and Ella and Jamie the videographer. We all hung out and we had a good time. Made it back to the hotel. Straight to bed. No residence bar. No more bottles of Heineken. Just bottles of Vishka. Hit the pillow. Ding, 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 ding. It's 10 o'clock. Time to get up. Find a bit of breakfast. Hit the road from Ballina to Athlone in Thai Radio Studios. Do a great show on Friday. Really enjoyed it. And then crash. Kaput. Get home. Make a bit of dinner. Watch a bit of Netflix. Don't get to see much of it at all. But I watched Don't Look Up for the second time. Got up Saturday. Thought, Grant, I'm off tonight. I'm not DJing. And then the phone. Bing. Bing. Hey man, just thought you should be aware of this. Ah, oh, fuck. The scammers are out again. They've made a Dave Juke page and they're messaging a load of people on the Dave Juke Facebook about you've won a prize. Fill in your details and the messages didn't stop coming so I had to combat that for about an hour and a half and inform everyone. Made it down the road. Stopped in Sligo for a rally programme. The Sligo Stages rally was on Sunday. And I went and checked out one of the stages outside Bolly Gawley. Found a beautiful left-hand sweeping 90-degree corner. Thought this would be a perfect spot. I'll come here tomorrow. I'll bring the two brothers. Told them. They said, yes, we'll go down to my cousin's 21st. It was in the house. Got a bit of food. Met some of the family. They all went to the pub. Brought some of them up. Then was convinced to come into the pub. He said, no, I'm going to get tortured. I don't like it. Went in. Straight away. 30 seconds into the pub. Photo with someone. Went out the back to the smoking area. Met more people. Owen's friends. My cousin's 21st friends. They were great crack. Stone fucking full time mad bastards. But fierce funny. Shout out to Marching and all the Boss Aaron crew from Bally Buffet. And then I went home. Got up at 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. Went over and collected my brothers. We went to the Sligo Rally. Had a brilliant day with them. Ended so tragically. We were nowhere near where the accident happened. It was a completely different stage. But nonetheless, it was still so shocking. And my sincere condolences. Doubtful that anyone who knew them is listening. Well, actually, no, I do know a lad. My sincere condolences, no matter how futile or non-helping they are, I feel it would be poor form and remiss of me not to offer them to the families and friends and all those who knew the two men who died in just an awful, awful accident at the Sligo Rally. 
Unfortunately, it has been all too common for some of the rallies I've went to for tragedy to strike. But no matter what and no matter how many times you tell yourself that motorsport is awfully dangerous when something like this happens, it's still so painful for those who are left behind and those affected by it. So to Gene McDonald's family and Darren Maguire's family, I was so sorry. I've read about the two men extensively over the last few days and they just seemed like salt of the earth rally men who loved what they were doing, loved rallying, loved motorsport and I'm sure they will be sorely missed by all those who knew them. I found myself really enjoying Sunday. So much. I hope you don't think I'm being disrespectful, but parking what I just said about the tragedy, those few hours with my brothers before that were some of my favourite times of this year. And Keen and Adam, they're teenagers now, they're really growing, they're nearly as tall as me, they're becoming men. Their innocence isn't as innocent as it was, but they are still full of the joys and ungrounded by what life has to offer. And that's not exactly the reason why I enjoyed spending time with them. I did so because I love them dearly. They are my own flesh and blood, and I have regrets of not spending more time with them. It got me thinking on Sunday and not DJing Saturday night and being able to go to my cousin's 21st, even without drinking. How much has been sacrificed in the pursuit of a career? The reason I've told you the whole backstory from minute two to now is to realise what life can entail and what does it does entail for me sometimes. Don't take this as a poor fucking me, look at me, I'm so busy. But sometimes you need to know the groundwork to realise where a man or a woman or a person is coming from. I'm trying to strike a balance between maintaining a career trajectory and not absolutely fucking myself up mentally and physically. It happened at Christmas. I don't know if I told you this, but I was very sick over Christmas. Not hospitalised, but just very poor from the middle of December all the way through till February. Just feeling like absolute shit. On the 23rd of December, I had done a gig in Castle Bar and I stayed in the nightclub completely on my own. They were kind enough to give me a room, but it was on the condition that, Dave... You are going to be on your own. There's going to be no night porter here. There's going to be no one cooking breakfast in the morning. There's going to be no one checking you out. Literally throw the key in behind front desk. We trust you not to touch anything and let yourself out the front door and make sure it slams behind you. Those are the conditions. I was happy to accept them and I stayed in that hotel on my own. I woke up on Christmas Eve and I just felt shattered. Shattered. I had put in the busiest, most successful, most exhausting year professionally of my life. From the minute Michal Martin said, we're opening again after COVID, until the 24th of December, it did not feel like I stopped once. Two years, I hadn't got to play a gig. Two years, I felt like life was on hold, as it was the feeling for everybody and perhaps the feeling for yourself. And I was trying to make up for so much lost time in such a short space of time that I did not check in on myself. And I had completely fucked myself. No matter how much Revive Active or Baraka boost, Boosts or Diorolite, I was getting into me. I wasn't getting back to full health. And it was clearly down to utter burnout. 
I made my way home on Christmas Eve, barely able to keep my eyes open. And then prepped the dinner and helped with everything I possibly could. Christmas, straight back for a nap. I had a big gig on St. Stephen's Night in Bundorn. There was 800 people at that. Enjoyed it, but was just happy it was over. Foolishly thought I was out the other side of feeling the way I was when drinking on the 27th. And on the 28th, I had a gig in Duns and Carrigan Shannon. And just was hopping from one thing to another to another. And then on the 29th, I headed home. I wasn't feeling right. And on the 30th, I headed for Glenty's, where my girlfriend is from. And I hadn't seen her parents or her family in ages. It was great to see them. And we had dinner at 7 o'clock. And at 8 o'clock, I was begging to go to bed. Begging. It's like, please, can we just go to bed? She was like, you haven't seen my family in ages. It's 8 o'clock. What the fuck's wrong with you? And I felt bad because what she was saying was true. Talk about a awful bit of manners but I couldn't keep my eyes open we were meant to go away for New Year's Eve and we had to cancel it I was that poorly I spent from 11 o'clock on the 30th of December till 12 noon on the 31st of December in bed 13 hours I got up for 3 hours and I went back to bed again pure and utter burnout And I've promised myself that in 2023, I wouldn't do the same again. But I'm in this balancing act now, wondering how far can I push myself to progress my career, to take the work that's going. Finding that little pivot point of falling off and burning myself out and progressing my career at the same time has proved and is proving to be quite a difficult one. And I don't know why I've made it so complicated on myself. I look at other successful people on social media and it seems they are flat out working and they're always healthy and happy and nothing ever stops for them. They're just go, go, go. Gig, gig, gig. Ding, ding, ding. Everything is well. And then if you put it out into the world that, hey, I'm going to cut back on some of the gigs, the fear is that the book can stop coming because the assumption is, Asher, that book, he's fucking soft. He's not going to do that. Or he's not taking bookings for this. I'm in such a difficult position and it's not something that you can get a quick Google search to help you with. I am trying to enjoy life while also progressing my career, while also putting the work in and trying to harmonize all those, while trying to maintain relationships, while trying to maintain friendships. And I don't know if I'm doing a fantastic job at it. I'm not in communication with my friends as much as I'd like to. I'm not doing as much stuff outside of work as I'd like to. I don't feel I watch as much Netflix as anyone else. I feel I don't have time to read. And a lot of that is excuses. And sometimes I become paralyzed by the amount of work that I have on that I end up doing nothing. Do you ever find that? That you have so many fucking things to do that you end up napping. (laughs) It's like an escape route. It's like, if I just go to sleep, this will all go away for a while. So I don't know is there such a thing as a work-life balance. I certainly haven't found it yet. But I felt on Sunday that it is possible. I really enjoyed it. It's It's possible to gig. And be a DJ. It's possible to do the podcast. It's 
possible to do social media but, and do the radio show and do my radio and meet people and shake hands and do selfies and harmonize all this together. But Jesus is not easy. It's possible, but it's not easy. I personally would love to be doing a lot more Instagram and TikTok videos and a lot more social media. But when they're done right, they consume a lot of time. And then what does that time eat into? Does that time eat into relationship and family time? Does it eat into leisure time? It has to come from somewhere. You sleep eight hours a day, you have 16 hours left. Or as Molly May says, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Who do I go to? Who can manage this for me? Because I don't know what the fuck I'm at currently at the minute. I'm trying to do everything. I must be doing something right. I've had a great summer so far. Played C sessions. I'm on a TV ad with Supermax. This podcast is flying. I'm really enjoying it. And you seem to be as well. Things are going well. But I feel things could be even better. Do you get where I'm coming from? I'm starting to go all over the fucking place now. But that's what I'm currently struggling with and fighting with, is finding a balance. And I'm wondering, does anyone else feel the same? I feel everyone else has it figured out, except me. But is that social media? Is that me in my head? Am I looking at other people on Instagram stories absolutely flaking through life? I feel people are more productive than me. I feel people are more organised than me. I feel people have a better grasp on friendships and relationships, better communicators. I've been very harsh on myself. Or do I need this dose of reality? Once again, you have acted as a psychotherapist for yours truly. But perhaps I have shared some insights that you didn't know before or never suspected. And now for the gospel. Today's Gospel from Dave Duke to you, dear podcast listener, is about hotels and the lies they tell. Manny's a hotel I've stayed in my life. I couldn't even put a number on it. I'd say I've stayed in 15 or 20 this year alone. That is besides the point. What I'm getting at is that ye are lying through your teeth hotels when you put on your website... Lowest rate guaranteed when you book direct. Why are you so full of fucking shit? Do you think I'm fucking stupid? Do you don't think I check booking.com myself? That I'm going to take your word for it? That I'm going to get it cheaper with you than anywhere else? I have countless examples. Currently one in front of me right now. Where if I book direct on the website, you say it's going to charge me 280 euro. But if I book on booking.com currently right now, it's 203 euro. Explain that, you fuckers. Yes, there are some examples where it is cheaper to book direct. You might save a tenner. You might save a fiver. It might be the exact same price. Ye are the exemption to the rule of lion fucks. If you truly want me to book direct, be on par or at least a tenner cheaper, and I will say, no bother. I will bypass booking.com's fees to give it to you. I will not pay their commission. I will make sure you get it. But if you're going to lie to me, you fucking bastard. then it will result in further Gospels. Shout out to some hotels that are booked in direct. I can only think of one that comes to mind currently. The Riverside Hotel in Sligo does good rates direct. For the purposes of not being an absolute arse, I won't name any other current hotels until a further date. 
That's today's gospel inspired by a trip to Dublin I plan to make on Saturday, but now for some of your questions. I'm going to put these two together. It's Sean and Chloe, who I met in Ballina. Sean, more of a comment than a question. Just want to say you are a legend and I hoped you liked the corona. Sean, your fangirl. And then Chloe, who is Sean's girlfriend. Spotify playlist, you pinky promised. Chloe and Sean. Sean and Chloe. It was great to meet you. Sean is an avid listener of the podcast and showed me his full playlist history where every Dave Duke podcast was fully played. He said that Chloe was shy, but Chloe then spoke and said she wanted a Spotify playlist. Just just a normal dance one or um, uh, please advise. And not just Chloe, but you listening to the podcast. Would you like a Dave Duke playlist on Spotify? Could you be arsed? Is there not enough out there? Also, another not a question, but a comment from Neve. Not a cue, but thoroughly enjoyed the pod and also enjoyed listening to you and Alan Clark's. Thank you, Neve. You're very sound. And I'm going to finish today's podcast on trying to answer this question. Where's your favourite pub to drink? Fiona, of all... Oh, sorry, not Fiona. Fanola. My apologies. I can see how Fanola gets her name mixed up. Fanola, that's a fucking great question. And I don't think anyone has ever asked me my favourite pub to drink. Many's the time I've been asked about, oh, your favourite place to go out or a nightclub, but no one has ever asked it as bluntly and as coherently as that. Can I give you a couple? Is this a cop-out? A place that I miss dearly is the Wellington Bar in Kinloch, County Leitrim. It's where I grew up. It's where I became a man. I have so many fond memories in that place. And to say I was devastated the day it closed would be an understatement. I still lament and I still retail stories of great nights and great days spent in that pub to one's Young ones who wouldn't remember it. I'm 30 now and I'd be telling 22-year-olds about how much they missed in the welly and how iconic it was. So rest in peace to the welly. If it was still open, it would still be my favourite pub to drink in. Currently at the minute, I do love the Harbour Bar in Downing's County Donegal. It's a fantastic establishment. I also do like the... I like most of the pubs in Downings. There's not many, but I, I I like nearly them all. I like drinking in Downings. It's a great spot. Other pubs that are favourites of mine to drink in. Peddler Max in Athlone is excellent for the crack. The Phoenix in Bundorn. Chase and Ball is solid. And I will go back to the Railway Bar in Bundorn as well. I always thought the railway bar in Bundorn was full of people who I wouldn't get along with, people who I couldn't relate with. I just thought it was a, a full of arseholes bar. Do you ever get that notion about a place? But I had ventured into it and I had a great night in it. So the railway bar in Bundorn, I can only apologise for the assumptions I had about you unfounded allegations that I made about you but it now is one of my favourite places to have a pint in so shout out to the Railway Bar in Bundorn and of course yup the Phoenix and the Duns in Carrigan Shannon that concludes today's podcast this episode whether you're listening to it at 7 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the evening or what other there's only two 7 o'clock so I've ran out Thank you so much for listening to the Dave Duke Podcast. I very much look forward to all your concerns and your feedback on this episode in particular. Till we speak again. Take it. Savage. Handy!